Cheran and um, and everyone else. I hope you can hear me. Um, otherwise, I know you would tell me. Um, it's very okay. nice to see um, see some of the people that I can recognize, uh, some of the names uh, at least. Um, I'm going to present work uh, that I'm doing with a number of co-authors, um, uh, including Sneha Krispal, who is uh, also present uh, in the meeting, and uh, she can join and answer any questions um, at, at a later stage as as we uh, as we go along. So let me share the screen. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about how caste. Um, maintains and increases uh, economic inequality. Um, so the agenda, uh, as far as this uh, presentation goes, is to talk about uh, economic inequality and the role of uh, caste. Um, I would be mostly talking about uh, inequality and, and, and use caste as, as an illustration because, uh, because what I'm talking about um, applies to all types of inequality, uh, whether it is race, gender, or any type of privilege that you can take off. Um, and caste is, is, is one example, a very good example of it, but uh, we, you know, this is also a very generalizable kind of thing. And then I look at uh, the uh, role of corporations in inequality. Uh, that's, that's what I um, kind of specialize in. Um, and uh, look at some HR practices and how they can be influenced by caste. So the first thing that I'd like to clarify is that when we talk about economic inequality, um, Wamsi has presented the, the wealth inequality um, and um, there is also income inequality, but economic inequality is much, much more than uh, wealth or income inequality. Uh, wealth or in income inequalities are, are the um, financial manifestations of, of economic inequality. Right? So what we do uh, is to look at the economic inequality in a much broader sense, uh, very much similar to Amartya Sen's uh, ideas on inequality and, and, and say that uh, economic inequality is uneven distribution in the endowment and our access to financial and non-financial resources in a society, which manifests in differential abilities and opportunities to engage in value creation, appropriation and distribution. Uh, this is a very academic definition. Um, some of you would, would be able to relate to it, but I'll try to simplify it as we go along. So I've underlined a few things here. As you can see, we're talking about resources, uh, both endowment, that is what you possess, and access, what you can get access to, and abilities and opportunities. So if we look at, or if we expand on that, uh, endowments are, are what you have. Um, so this can be various types of capital. Um, economic capital uh, would be wealth and assets that, uh, that Wamsi has uh, presented. Uh, and there are also other types of resources or other types of capital like uh, social capital, uh, which is uh, the relationships that you have, which get you access to resources and, and, and information and, and knowledge. And then the cultural capital that you, that you carry because of your, uh, your upbringing and because of, of the various activities that you engage in. And then uh, you also have the symbolic cap capital, which is what actually signifies you, like you know, when you mention uh, your, your achievements or your characteristics, what does it mean? Uh, so symbolic capital, um, I mean, if we talk about the, uh, the theorization, I think it is much, much different in the context of caste than, it is, than the way it has been, uh, it has been theorized. So then, uh, so this is the part of endowments, like you know, the various type of resources uh, our capitals that you have or that you can, you can possess. And the second part is the access, uh, what you can get um, through these resources, right? So this could be like health and education. Um, health, by health, we talk about uh, any number of other determinants of health, like whether it's good nutrition, whether it is access to water, uh, access to housing, uh, a number of these kind of things that we would be looking at. And, um, and, and also uh, the access to education. So these would now be called as human capital or those would kind of reflect in human capital. And the other access uh, that we look at is the markets and uh, access to markets and institutions, right? Uh, so that would be in the form of uh, employment and, and entrepreneurship. So what we have is the, uh, is the, is the economic capital, uh, which is the financial resource. 
social, cultural, symbolical capitals, uh, which are the non-financial resources. And you have health and education, which is the abilities, and then access to markets and institutions, which are the opportunities. So let's see how caste affects these endowments and access. And as all of you know, uh, are fa fairly familiar with this, caste fixes the position of people based on birth um, in, in, in a graded hierarchy with you know, each group uh, being su more superior than the, than the other. Right? So that actually gives you a symbolic capital. There is, there is, there is a great power or there is, there is, uh, there is an understanding of, of what, let's say like you know, a Brahmin means or, or what a Vaishya means or what a Kshatriya means or what a Shuddha means or what a Dalit means. So, so you don't have to really show anything else. The moment you identify, uh, there is there is uh, there is a lot of a uh, lot of things that that come with it. And the second aspect is that you um, the caste has also uh, assigned the uh, occupation uh, based on that position, right? Um, so what does what it means is that Brahmins have uh, have occupied roles that that involved that roles like. Um, uh, priests, advisors, researchers, scholars, philosophers, thinkers, writers, all the kind of roles that, that involved knowledge. And as the economy modernized, uh, it also moved into a number of other knowledge related roles. Right? And similarly, Vaishyas were, were more into the, uh, into the business and, and, and trade and owning of farms. And Kshatriyas were, were more into the, uh, in, 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 into, the, uh, into the roles of administration, or, they were kings and soldiers. Um, and then you have Shudras which, who were doing uh, you know, manual jobs or physical activities. Right? So this occupation assignment uh, from high caste to low caste, upper caste to lower caste um, also means like, you know, what value you can get out of this. So, so the, the, the high value occupations are, are assigned to the upper caste and low value occupations are assigned to the lower caste. And third, uh, caste also determined the family life and social interactions, right? So that is, that's what your so social capital is. So this is what actually makes it difficult to, to see caste for a lot of people is because caste determines whom you marry and all your relationships look like, you know, your relationships and, 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 and there's no caste attached to it, right? So, and because of your, your group um, membership or like, you know, the fact that you belong to a particular caste, brings a lot of relationships to you. So that's the social capital. And then finally, like uh, you have the access to education, resources and dignity, uh, which determine the human and cultural capitals again, like you know, whether you've been able to uh, access education or arts um, or, or water, san uh, sanitation, and whether you've been treated as, as an equal human being or a superior human being or an inferior human being, all of these have great effect on, on, on individuals, how they develop. So in short, all the upper castes had the high level of resources and opportunities, and lower castes had a low level of resources and opportunities. So this has happened over, uh, over centuries or thousands of years, and, and has resulted in a system that is, uh, that is uh, highly unequal. So what is value creation and, um, and, and, and um, uh, appropriation distribution? Is that with, with value creation, we are creating a product um, are a service that somebody is willing to buy, uh, pay money and willing to buy. Appropriation is when you sell that product at the most price or the, at, at closest to the cost that the customer is willing to buy and also make it at the lowest price. So you're trying to maximize your, uh, your profit out of this. And distribution is when you take that profit and distribute it across the people who have contributed to making the product or service. Right? So if you look at economic inequality, uh, the various aspects of it. So what you have here is the endowments. That is what you have or what you get, uh, what, what, you, what, what you possess. And then that determines your access, uh, you know, what you can actually get in terms of either loans or uh, your education or health and, and, and your access to, um, to, to jobs and entrepreneurship. And that determines what you can actually make. Uh, you know, your compensation, your mobility, your status, and, and your security. So this is how this whole system, um, you know, based on what you have and based on what you can uh, access, uh, that determines what you can make. And this goes back to creating your endowments again. 
So that's what we show here in the uh, in this particular um, uh, diagram, where uneven distribution in in various capitals and uneven access to resource and opportunities together um, results in value creation and value appropriation are influences to the extent that people can can engage in this, and then that determines the value distribution. So, as a result of all of this, are happening over several years. What we have is wealth inequalities that uh, <laughs> that Mamsi has has um, has presented. So I'm not going to talk um, much on this one, um, but as you can see, like most of the billionaires are those who traditionally come from the uh, from the merchant class. And, um, and others who were also landowners, uh, you know, move, uh, sold that land or converted that and then also set up business and, and, and became billionaires. Right? So, but let's look at what happens within the organizations, right? So this is what I am uh, primarily interested in. So the businesses play a central role in maintaining and increasing inequality via various things like, you know, various human resource practices and corporate social responsibility. So, so this is a paper that we have uh, we have recently written, uh, and um, they I have uh, I have provided links to uh, these articles at the end of the uh, the presentation the, on the last slide, so you can take a look at those. So so what we have seen um, uh, with respect to the billionaires uh, is also replicated within the organization. So here, uh, so this is uh, the share of major social groups in, in in different occupations, and you can see like you know the high caste and 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 some OBCs uh, being Highly represented in the uh, in, in in more uh, upper and and middle management level jobs, and others are lower castes and OBCs and 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 Muslims and and Dalits being represented in the in the jobs that are that are less valuable or lower level in the organization. And uh, this is another another study which has uh, examined the board uh, characteristics and uh, their caste composition, and. Uh, as you can see, like you know, uh, the Brahmins occupy 50% of the of the board uh, uh, positions, and Vaishyas in about 35. So together they account about 90%. And if you also add uh, the other upper caste, we are talking about 95% being occupied by uh, by the by the top three three castes. So so that by itself does not uh, seem very very surprising, uh, unless we really know what is the percentage of people who belong to those those castes, and um, these numbers vary depending on on on, on the data, uh, but the most that we can say is like you know the, the, the share of total in the total population is about fourteen percent. So the fourteen percent really occupying about ninety five percent of the positions, and uh, that you would see in the same uh, same is also seen in the in the faculty at uh, at IIMs and also at at other uh, other top institutes. That about ninety five percent being from the from the top caste. Right? So now, how does this happen? So we have some examples here, right? So there is some ads here uh, which have asked for only Brahmins, uh, or Agarwal Vaish, uh, or groups becoming uh, you know part of the <clears throat> even even in even in the U.S. Uh, the tech companies. Uh, Groups being formed based on on, on caste in in uh, in different units. Right? So it might, if it were like this, it would have been very easy. Uh, but this is not how it operates. The caste operates in a very very invisible fashion, right? So what does it mean? So let's take a look at um, how the privilege really operates in case of 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 hiring. So so here I have um, added. Um, I, I've tried to look at various steps of hiring. And then I've, I've put human, social, cultural, and symbolic capitals uh, in, in the columns. So a lot of times, the positions are not necessarily advertised. And these positions are not available to people without privilege. Uh, so all lower caste uh, individuals would not be able to get um, any idea about this job. So, so this happens through the reference, right? And let's go to the advertisement. Once we go, once we uh, once a company advertises a job, now that has to be seen by the potential applicants. Uh, of course, they can see, but also they they can be uh, alerted to it by those who are in their social network. 
So these are, uh, you know, one, these are ways in which the candidates get to know about the, about the jobs. But whether they apply or not is also deter determined by how the organization projects itself um, in terms of its culture, uh, whether it's, it, for example, if it projects itself as a, as a very aggressive company, then certain type of people go for it. If, if it projects itself as, a, as, a, as, a, as an intellectual, um, spiritual company, certain other type of people go for it. And what kind of organizational imagery do you do you do you put out in terms of uh, of the people that you, uh, you you choose for your advertisements or for your company web pages? So these can have an effect on whether individuals apply for these positions or not. So that is at the stage of the advertisement. Now let's move to the stage of screening. Right? So we know that many studies have shown uh, that at the time of screening. People from uh, underprivileged backgrounds, whether it is uh, whether it is uh, 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 black people or whether it is women or whether it is lower castes or, or Muslims, all of them are discriminated uh, because they can figure out from the name uh, who the person is. Right. So we know that uh, there is they are screened out. Um, there are countless examples of, of this, and I'm sure I don't need to give you these examples. You 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 know many of these. And the other way that, that they can be screened out is, is through the hobbies and interests, um, which are formed through the cultural capital, or which are formed, uh, which are represented by the uh, hobbies and interests. Right? And then in the, in, in, in the interview process, if you clear all these steps, and if you get to the interview, that is where your education and experience comes into, into play. But there are also other things that come into play, like they would ask you about family background that would uh, that that would tell you tell about the social social network or social capital that you carry, and there are also cultural fit or similar cultural similarities that that individual look for individuals look for those who are hiring that is the hiring managers look for uh, for people who are similar to them, and there are also like you know these status signals that you can you can um, you can exhibit in the interview, uh, like what would it mean for you to carry uh, you know certain type of accessories with you. Or what would it mean for you to carry, let's say, a, uh, a, an Om tattoo uh, or a swastika tattoo um, that is visible uh, versus uh, something else, right? Uh, so, so you can you can see these symbols affecting the 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 assessment, uh, not necessarily in a very uh, very conscious way, but in a very unconscious way. And then finally, <clears throat> you have these reference checks where. Depending on what your um, what your how privileged you are, uh, you can get high quality and high status references, and um, and that can have an effect on the on, on the job. So, <clears throat> as you can see here, what seems like a very simple hiring process, which is supposed to look for education and experience and skills and abilities and those kind of things, is is is, is a very socio cultural and political process in which a number of other things also come into play that makes it difficult for people to enter the organizations. And once they enter, then advancing is another aspect and, and we wouldn't have time for that. Um, but I just want to give you a sense of, a sense of this. So um, I'll close with a uh, with, uh, with, with, with couple, uh, couple of thoughts. Well, one is that it is often believed that you know, caste is, uh, is, is a problem because it discriminates certain people, uh, right? No, that is not the case. Caste is a problem for everyone, everyone uh, whether, whether it's an upper caste or, or a lower caste, because we know from literature that everybody gets affected. Um, and, and it does uh, affect your, your ability to think rationally, uh, your, your, your approach towards, uh, towards life, your approach towards work. Your, so all of these are affected by, by your, uh, your position in the, in the inequality system or caste system. Right? The second thing that I'd like to say is that, um, Caste is not a problem uh, again for for organization uh, for for individuals, but it is also a problem for organizations uh, that is businesses and economies because that affects employee attitudes and behaviors and and some of the examples that you're you're seeing now in the in the organizations in in Silicon Valley uh, with respect to discriminations. Right? So so those have an effect on organizational performance. And um, if people get alienated, if, you pe if people feel alienated in the organization, that has an effect on performance. This again, like, you know, we know from research that this, is, this happens. And um, if 
a large portion of the population in case of India, for example, is not able to pursue productive opportunities, uh, then that has an effect on economy, like you know, how much the economy can grow and, and, and how much the, the country can progress. So I think these are the things that, that we need to be talking about um, rather than thinking that you know, if we don't talk, then, uh, then you know, everybody is equal. So with that, I would like to uh, thank you. And <music>